Hello, welcome back to the future of photography. Um, it's just the three of us today, Adrian, Jeremiah, and myself. Hi there. Hey, and, everybody. Uh, hi, Emer. Get over your cold. Yeah. We too. miss you. And mm. it's just a cold, so she'll be fine. Yeah, no, no panic, no panic. <laughs> Um, we have an episode that um, you, Jeremiah, have prepared, which is, yeah, yeah I think it touches everyone here, um, presentation in the time of COVID. So, mm. um, yeah, yeah. So you need to find a way to get your photography in front of people and just putting them up on Flickr, on whatever photo platform of your choice is, I guess, not enough. Because you need to, you need to stick well, out. Well, yeah, it's not just I, photos, is it? It's all sorts of stuff we're going to talk. I'm really looking forward to this conversation because there's, there's yeah. lots of stuff going on. It's very, very um, I mean, not not just because of, of COVID, but the, there's a lot of there's a lot of real big fundamental business shifts and stuff like that, isn't there? So, yeah, well, I think we, you know, we were all inspired by uh, I think Adrian's comments about. Um, was it um, Wonder Woman 85, uh, which had just been postponed to several times. Mm, yeah. uh, but then they kind of locked down the day and date where they will release it in theaters uh, Christmas Day and also on HBO Max, uh, which here is a, you know, a growing and significant streamer. Um, and um, I don't know if they're going to charge an addition or they're just going to use it as bait for people to... Um, to kind of subscribe, uh, but I think that uh, they've they've done the calculations and they know once you do have a subscriber paying, you know, uh, seven to ten dollars a month, it's um, it's pretty sticky and they stay around. And when you talk about you know Disney, just within the year got seventy million subscribers. Uh, is it worth taking a bath on the theatrical release of a movie wherein the studios only get back 50% on average of the of the grosses? And they did the calculations. I guess they're finding that after experimenting with Tenant, um, going right to the consumer is going to be, at least in the uh, medium term, something that they're going to push and accelerate Um which is a double-edged sword for filmmakers, since the good news is you can reach a hell of a lot of people globally. Uh, the bad news is that you don't have that uh, experience theatrically, and some films will suffer because of that, and others will benefit. So, um, is that also a is there also a financial difference, like with uh, a concert and uh, the whole thing on Spotify, the streaming revenues being much much lower? No, I think it's very different because um, people on Spotify, for example, or Apple Music, um, one tends to create playlists, listen to music over and over again. One would listen to the same song, same artists, same, uh, you know, uh, overall genres multiple times. People don't tend to watch a single show over and over again. Uh, and because of that, um, you know, you, you need... Uh, a business model much the same as as Netflix uh, has created in terms of leading the way. Um, you want new shows dropping every week, so the you know the fear of missing out, the FOMO aspect of it, uh, is that people are always talking about a great show. Uh, you know, even if you're not watching it, that you know you will be able to watch it is some motivating factor. And when you consider the price point of, you know, eight, ten dollars a month compared to cable, which is very expensive in this country now if you're gonna get a lot of channels, um, it, it's good value add. So I think people would rather pay a monthly to Netflix knowing that they get The Crown and Stranger Things and big budget stuff, as well as small little indies. Um, you know, I think the the difficulty will be moving forward is finding stuff, is promotion of that stuff. It is that yeah. that is interesting, isn't it? Because yeah, you know, and, and I guess this is in part this has been coming for some years. But you know, there was all that always that thing about well, if we move to everything being video on demand, what's the water cooler conversation? You know, what's oh, yeah. where, how is it that you how is it that you make connections between people and get that word of mouth about something that's good and. 
uh, I think uh, I mean uh, clearly the conversation has changed. I mean, you know, in, in the UK, we've you know we, we've long had um, a, a great vast number of channels to choose from. Uh, should you uh, subscribe to? We don't ha- cable's not such a big thing as it is in the states. Although there are there is cable, but satellite TV is the big thing in the UK, um, and that is very expensive as well. Uh, yeah, it's 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 it, you can easily be ten times the price of Netflix. Right, you can easily end up paying Sky TV ten you know, uh, seventy quid a week a month. Uh, well, yeah. Where you'd only pay. hence cutting the cord. And that's well, what's yeah, happening yes, and it's, it's, yes, the metaphor. The metaphor falls down slightly when the the signal comes through the air from the sky. But yes, it is cord cutting of the sort. But it's so that that's changed, and that there's that distribution's changed. And then there was you know there was the big thing around Mulan in the summer, wasn't there? Yeah, which was you know Disney chose to do that essentially on a pay per view. Yeah. You had to pay extra to see the premiere, but then it became available you know later so that they they tried to create an event around that then there's there's wonder woman which has been postponed at one of uh, a whole bunch you know of course we you know who knows when we'll see the next james bond movie yeah <laughs> it's like, um so so all of this is 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 intriguing to me um i could sort of see a circular revenue for for sony because you, you know if you don't go and watch a sony picture that's been distributed in the theaters then maybe you go and buy a bigger sony tv and watch it at home <laughs> <laughs> well, that is definitely happening. Um, people are spending money uh, on bigger, better, clearer systems here, uh, especially days like uh, yesterday, which is called Black Friday here, which is traditionally a TV buying day, um, where you have you know OLED TVs for twelve hundred dollars. Uh, you know, um, it's it's crazy. You know, I saw is... an advert on the television the other day. It for it was less than four hundred pounds. Yeah. for a 50 inch 4k television yes and when you start to add up the sound bars that sonos is putting out etc cetera, etc cetera, and a lot of these third party you know you're you're going to be able to emulate at least a bigger system uh even a good projection system with 5.0 or 7.1 uh is not unaffordable uh to people nowadays and it will be it will get cheaper and cheaper because it is well within the desire of the manufacturers to bundle um, like Samsung, like Sony, like Apple to create a, a kind of synergies of technologies and content. Mm. So speaking and that of that kind of brings us to photography. Right. I was just going there because, because um, those, those big, big screens that um, many people now start having or already have, are those kind of turning into a, a like a prim, premium presentation space for photography as well? I don't think they're premium because they haven't really um, reached critical mass in many ways. But uh, what, one of the things I wanted to talk about is an example of 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 presentation through the television, and uh, I'll get to that. I just want to uh, kind of create a little context here. Uh, when we talk about uh, how do we get our images out um, as photographers, we also have to be sensitive to what our motivations are. I, I, I think if you're making commercial photographs that would traditionally be in advertising, call it magazines, print or online, um, or uh, photojournalism, um, you know, whether it's kind of niche ProPublica or, or, or New York Times here, or as we talked about last week, um, or, or even Hello Magazine. A, a lot of these kinds of images don't seem to suffer from the presentation of online, whether it's phone, iPad, uh, or tablet, and PC. That's the way people have been experiencing. And I don't think uh, those photographers have seen much uh, in terms of, of, I don't know, latency to pick up their images. Um, I think that with that, we are seeing a lot more stock footage uh, in ads, because obviously the creating cycle is limited by COVID in some ways, um, and in some places more than others. But um, you could turn on the television here and and see a lot of commercials using 
either still images that have been kind of, uh, you know, um, artificially made to kind of push in, push out, uh, etc., uh, or uh, stock um, film that have been put together with the right music and voiceover and maybe a little bit of uh, POV shots and uh, uh, selfies. And, and then they put together commercials that way. So uh, I think in advertising, uh, there is um, not as much uh, desperation to get one's image out. When it comes to artists, it's a whole other world. When you're faced with um, you know, the tradition of how images in the art world get presented. Traditionally, we are talking about books. We are talking about uh, museums. We are talking about galleries. Um, two out of those three are social institutions. Uh, we go to gallery openings as much to hobnob with our friends and cohorts as much as getting inspired. Often you'll go to an opening, uh, engage with the artists and the community, uh, but we'll return to see the show in, in a kind of a quieter way if the show kind of really rings your bell. Um, those openings are gone. Um, you know, I, I was supposed to have a very uh, big museum show uh, in Latin America in 2020. Obviously, that ain't going to happen. And I'm starting to think, do I really need or want that in 2021 or 2022? So I personally am looking for different ways of getting my, my work out. Um, and I'll get to that in a sec. But um, galleries in terms of sales, generally, it's one to one. Um, I just my own gallery here in Los Angeles, you know, uh, has a show and, uh, and a space. And they said, come meet the artist, uh, you know, 12 o'clock uh, last Friday, and I'll open the gallery for you. And it was just like, literally masked and gloved. It was just me, the artist and the work. And, you know, there was an appreciation. It was nice, but there was not the, there's nothing about the work that was that was not great but the experience of sharing the energy with people much the same way that a a film in a theater that's really exciting the collective energy really pushes us to have another level of enjoyment well that's now gone currently i'm not sure it'll come back the way we always imagined it would it's a that's a really interesting thing isn't it because a lot of those models of distribution are based on exclusivity and uh scarcity you know yes i mean you know with the possible exception of books which are slightly more readily available but as we all know you know you know art books don't sell in masses you know uh, they don't sell in massive numbers so to experience a show or to experience a body of work you know maybe yeah it, it, it's the whole thing has it been somewhat turned on its head i mean is it you know how how do you present artistically and and maintain that that scarcity and exclusivity that comes along with with fine art uh how, how does how is that achieved when you have to distribute you know digitally um let, well, me, let me let me, go let ahead. me uh, get in here for a second because i've i'm seeing one platform who is doing a good job at replacing that um, that opening kind of um, thing um, quite quite successful in that is YouTube right now with their premieres um, they Ooh. have this feature called a premiere where you as the producer of a video um, tell the system when that premiere will happen and then if you have a circle of fans around whatever you're presenting, um, a lot of them will then gather because they get a note from the system, they get a reminder from the system, a notification telling that uh, your favorite artist is or your favorite producer, your favorite favorite vlogger, YouTuber is um, releasing something, is premiering something on Saturday 6 p.m. And then um, people gather in the comments, including the artist usually, and they will then have this communal experience, at least a... Uh, a version of it and a taste that taste of it yeah because ob then they could do streaming couldn't they from an actual physical gallery if they wanted to well but 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 the premieres yeah and you could make this a stream as well i mean you can time streams you can announce them so um the youtube is is and, and I've, I've attended a few of those 
which were just regular kind of 10 minute videos that someone was uh, mm, putting okay. on but um a lot of fans and then you have these fans in the chat and then you are part of that community and uh it gives it it gave me that feeling of wow there is a bit more than just me sitting at home watching it there are other people and you interact with them but chris the the experience of the work itself uh, because we could distinguish between the content of the image which is just the image in other words you're not looking for anything uh as a fine art object for example sure. Uh, ju just the the subject of it, and that experience online is is powerful. I mean, you look at a photojournalistic show, um, and you know we'll do a show on on storytelling uh, in the future. But but I, I I think that 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 experience of of being in a gallery, looking at those images and reacting to the content, could be very similar uh, to an online experience. Oh sure. Where where it differs, for example, uh, my last show in LA had very very large uh, images. Um, they were you know printed on on glass, and they they were you know maybe seventy inches by fifty inches. You know you know maybe eight or ten of them, and the scale of them was very much a part of the experience of them. Um, and so if you look at those images online, I mean, they are like, wow, those are, those are cool, mm -hmm. but they are in no way the experience of actually living with them or being with them. And I've seen them in collectors' homes. They're very different experiences in terms of how much time you spend with the image, what it, re how the resonance of color subject and, and object uh, interact. So th that is a, a critical difference. And when we lose the ability to experience scale and and the, the kind of feeling of object, we, as artists, you, you have to start digging and looking elsewhere for it. So, so I do think the online experience has a strong place, and that's not going to go away. I think that we are much the same way that streaming or working from home is not going to go away. It doesn't mean all of us will be doing it. It just means that, you know, we may spend more time working at home uh, than we did in the past and how that balances will be dictated by the individual companies. But museums themselves, um, and they're in uh, our show notes, are, are beginning to understand that and starting to create a virtual experiences of their own collections. Um, and ICP is a, a good example, but I don't think there is a museum in the world that is not thinking of this currently. Um, well, I mean, they you know, have to, don't they? I mean, they, they have they, to. Even yeah. on a good day, they'd only be able to get half the people in. Oh, look, I can see there on the screen there, Chris is showing uh, a, yeah. a photograph of the British Museum. Um, and for yeah. anybody that's been fortunate enough to go there, that glassed over space that is the is, is, in the British Museum is is amazing, right? It's an, it's an amazing place to be. But yeah. So this is a way of connecting you to the actual building and the galleries. It's not a substitution, but it's more of a reminder. And uh, certainly I think it, it's effective in, in bringing you closer to a, a you know, to the experience. Uh, at the beginning of COVID, and I think I may have mentioned this in a previous podcast, I was about to go into the Getty and the Getty here is, um, I think it's a, an incredible uh, museum, but but it its stock and trade is their photo collection and their research, and they have you know early Nadars and daguerreotypes and salt prints and whatnot that are that are stored, and you can apply uh, through their you know their um, departments to go and look at very specific prints you know, where the curators will come and you'll you know, put on gloves and you'll be able to actually hold and see these things. Mm. I was about to go in and, and study some salt prints and, um, you know, when COVID locked down. So I cannot do that. But if you look at the screen now, I mean, here is um, the way it would be if you were walking. Now, it doesn't, it, it really doesn't 
take the the experience of being there and looking at the thing. Um, but it does remind you that when this is all over, uh, maybe you should, you know, take I, a peek. I find it. I find it interesting on the um, on the other page here that we had open that this is riddled with ads for buying uh, for selling the Oculus Quest. So isn't that? We are, yeah, I noticed that. But by the way, for good reason, right? Oh, for because for good reason. Uh, yeah, and I'll, I'll uh, you know, I think in part of my my notes, I I, I talk about that VR galleries. I think I have a, a piece of VR galleries, um, are some are a way to create a different kind of experience. Now, those are individuals, at least for the time being. The you know, until we can get uh, very, very, very accurate, which is coming, uh, representations of ourselves to move through a virtual space together. Um, I think uh, it's pretty uh, inviting. The Peterson, which I have done the Peterson virtual uh, tour, the Automotive Museum, which I highly recommend if you are ever in town. The Peterson Automotive Museum is a dazzling place to be. Um, but their uh, interactive uh, curator taking you through a collection is pretty fun. And you can really suspend into it because they do it right. And because they're, three, they're 3D objects, they're cars. So yes, you can't touch the metal, but you couldn't if you were there anyway. I mean, maybe you can touch the chrome, you know, but you can't sit in them. No, you know, no. there are some Formula One. Not unless you're Jay Leno. In, but, <laughs> yeah, well, he doesn't need a museum because he has his own. Yeah. But but, you know, another way is the the this museum, which which really is the kind of uh, if if we're starting to think about how that works, um, I think I have a uh, a yeah, my pick of the week, which we'll get to later, uh, will be about how to create your own virtual museum and put up your own show. So, so, so can I can I spin a positive on this then? I mean, yeah, because yeah. it's, it's dead easy to get all gloom and doom about this. I mean, yeah, and there's one of those things that we just flicked through, which was the I can't remember the name of the hall. It's 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 one of the Egyptian halls at the at the Met in New York, and and they they, they were showing it as a three sixty thing. Uh, on on a web page and i've walked into that room i've walked into that room through that doorway right and it's it's the one at the top of the page of that page chris actually the the photo at the very top of that web page i i've walked into that room through that doorway that doorway is actually one doorway it's not two doorways either side <laughs> <laughs> and it's a long narrow room that goes away and you you walk in and it's it's a spooky room to walk into right it's yeah you know, it's if anybody that can get to the met in new york it's an amazing place the temple of dendur of it, which you're referring to is that uh, is that what it's called yeah uh, it's a recreation of i mean not a recreation they use the the, the real objects that were lifted from uh, egypt yeah and and similar i mean there are other amazing places the british museum we were talking about before that's yeah. amazing as well you can see you know half of ancient greece and and half of ancient Egypt in there now um, including the Rosetta stone which is just sure you know, yeah it's, uh, and so to, the, there's for me there's a it, it didn't have to be sculptures and historical things that we stole from other countries um it could be it, it could be just any kind of art and there's a, yeah. there's a real palpable emotional feeling you know to being in, in there and I think, I think like, th so that so there's a downside but then then the th I'm thinking of all the creative opportunities as well to 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 art will evolve art always evolves right doesn't it it does yeah, and I, I agree with that yeah um for, like for for example uh, anybody ever hear the uh, I think it was a podcast or a show a radio program or whatnot uh British Museum did it history of the world and the hundred objects it was, oh that was amazing yeah it, it was um yeah. it was a podcast series from radio 4 for uh, as well yeah it was it, fantastic it, it's was. very well worth seeing because they they took uh the curators just identified a hundred objects in the museum itself presented it and did a very deep dive into it as it represents, uh, you know, human history. And mm -hmm. online, you can really experience, look, do a deep dive and have a great appreciation. The next time you're able to go to the museum, yeah. it yeah, will open up a big world for you. You will have a great, you'll never look at that Rosetta Stone the same way again. And I, so I think there are benefits to combining um, 
our abilities to experience a certain um, certain works uh, that will that will lay a runway to a greater appreciation of you in the future. There are some experiences that can never be created. But going yeah. back to the fundamental problems that artists have is how do you get your work out there? And so, you know, social media creates an opportunity, albeit a very limited one in terms of image capture. I mean, I, you know, I post on Instagram um, is you know, is the experience of seeing uh, a little postage stamp of of a picture the same as seeing a printed piece? No, but it's a reminder yeah. that that <laughs> someone's out there there's, taking there's, there's stuff going on. Yeah, because no, I think if I could borrow a horrible world a word from the world of marketing, um, you you need a kind of omni-channel approach. Yeah, which which loosely speaking, at least the way it's used in in marketing circles in the UK, as I understand it, is it mean omni simply means all, right? You need you need to you need to have a a marketing campaign that encompasses all channels, and that would be social medias, that would be pop ups, it would be whatever it is, and some of those are not so easily available to us all at the moment. Hopefully, next year when we're all vaccinated, we'll be able to go back to doing that sort of stuff. But it's it. It's it is it is challenging, I think, especially for fine art, where so much of you know, so much of that experience is about being physically close to the thing and possibly physically close to other people who are also in awe of the thing. You know, it's, uh, but by the way, but those things evolve. What's happening here in terms of film is you're having the birth of the new drive in that is happening. Oh, it's happened in the UK. Yeah. Yeah. So I I would say that uh, were I ever to have a, a another opening, and I'm thinking about this, is it and can it be effective in a parking lot to rent a massive LED screen, you know, one of those very sharp, and bring people together in their cars and present the work large on a screen with Q and A and you know drinks being delivered to the car. I mean, well, I'm I'm just you know uh, thinking out loud here. Probably a good idea, but drinks in the car maybe not that good <laughs> idea. <laughs> but 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 um, the experience of the photography in an open plain place would be similar to projections um on buildings as uh experiential works of art which we are seeing the growth of now projection mapping i'm talking about mm. um i think that someone may build a netflix of galleries and channels that one could subscribe to and and with that um i happen to have a samsung smart tv it's called a frame it's called a frame because there's no metal uh, on it it's a wooden frame um there is a mode on the tv and i've had this for about four or five years there's a mode on the tv that allows for just you know the cost of a cup of coffee a month to subscribe to museums around the world who feed their works of art and their works of art, for example, a Chagall, just by, you know, I'm just pulling that, matted on paper in my living room on the TV. When you come in, and I've tried it with Turner's, people walk in, they go like, oh my God, where'd you get that? That's beautiful. <laughs> they don't even know it's an electronic image. It is that good. Because you can see the mat size, you can see the imprint, the paper quality, and you have to get very close uh, which you wouldn't normally do, and it's framed and it's sitting there. It's a v and you could do it from drawing Japanese museums. Uh, it, it's worth exploring because it is. It's not the same, but I've put my own pictures up there, and I have to say, it is a way of experiencing art in the house in an in a rotating way that is really good and they've built in technology so that you don't burn the screen in when uh, you do okay it. so how, how do they get around the fact that it is um you know that a, a tv is i get always get the words wrong it, it, tv projects light doesn't it it doesn't reflect light what's, what's the opposite of reflect i forget but 
Yeah, because you know, when you, normally when you'd see a, a, a piece of art, it would you, you would be seeing the light that's reflected off it, whereas a TV creates its own light, doesn't it? Well, you, you, well, have, I to, think you have to get the brightness just right, and then um, okay. if that yeah. combined with the, with the surface of it, which if, if it's not too re- well, if it's reflective, it wouldn't really bother anyone because that's what pictures are in frames as well. So I think. Um, if you get it right, you can you can match the brightness in the room, and then it will be unnoticeable. Yeah. Yeah, I I, I have never encountered that as an issue. Yeah. Mm, interesting. Um, and it's not like when you're in that mode, you have control. You do not. In other words, you can't increase. I mean, maybe if you kind of really truly dig down, made a universal brightness uh, for the entire TV, but, but you, it's not like, oh, that image is a little dark. I'm going to turn it up. No, See, that, that's not available. I can imagine it, that, that sort of, that sort of presentation technology combined with the idea of a, a YouTube premiere where everybody's online at the same time, you know, that, that could be, that could be really interesting. Couldn't it? I think at home frames like at home TVs, when they are, um, you know, 8k, beautiful, easy to hang, uh, wafer thin, Bluetooth or whatever is available, uh, subscribing to artists like music, subscribing to galleries or museums um, is going to be a, an effective way, especially as they get bigger and more towards the size of the actual work. Um, it's going to be, I think, uh, a new way of presenting work uh, that is uh, distributed um, effectively, um, I See, think. Call me old-fashioned, but that sounds way better than virtual reality to me. <laughs> you're, st- you're still not on the on the bandwagon here. You're still. Uh, I well, I'm. I've tried it, um, oh, and and fine. Um, yeah, I mean, it is. It is definitely immersive, but uh, we're not hundred percent there yet. I. Fully get that. Yes. Oh yeah, no. There's, there's plenty of room for for technology improvement if yes. um, if Facebook doesn't steal all our, our identities first. But I'm one one <laughs> generation away from buying an Oculus. One generation away. Okay. Yeah. You, yeah. you mean no, you would have bought me. the last one, but you won't buy <coughs> maybe, this one because it's got all the data. No, I haven't. Because, I've never bought one. Never because bought someone one. else brings out something that is even more amazing. Let's figure. Well, this out. it's that. You know, I'm. I'm just saying the immersive, yeah. uh, 3D experience, which I crave because I'm. I would like to be able to make work in that space as well, mm. but it's still. It just feels... I, I, I think one thing that pixelated. is happening right now, and I hope it will carry on after we've, we're all vaccined, is that the pandemic is forcing people into learning new things and into changing their ways. And uh, we can see this with what we're doing here, the video production. There's way more video conferencing, these kind of things. And people are getting a bit more comfortable trying out new things. So I, I sure hope that after we can all meet in real space again, that people have will not quickly forget about all this and go back to um, not no. caring about uh, it. Like, for example, uh, one could have an opening in a gallery or museum with huge light panels of yes. which the work is changing. And we see this in experimental work around the world. Uh, I think most effectively, I think, out of China, I've seen amazing work mm. yeah, in this kind of space. Um, but the, I think the one thing that that is exciting that hasn't changed that we are um, doing a deep dive in in terms of being photographers is book publishing. Mm-hmm. Um, the creation of a photo book uh, from blurb really easy to a gravure print book that is very high end, you know, limited edition of 10, whatever, hand bound to um, just, you know, print your Instagram for the last year, you know, just click one click and done. Uh, Artist books are, I think, going to um, create a a kind of a, maybe a a more democratic way of getting it out there. And, uh, And I think that, uh, purchasing books is a good way for collectors to engage with photographers. Um, yeah. I'm working on a book now. Uh, it will be actually two books, but I'm uh, on one that will have a print inside it. 
you know, it'll be a smaller edition. But yeah, I've uh, seen we'll that with something. zines actually as well. You know, just am- amateur photographers, but you know, uh, publishing their own zines, and and yeah. often they'll be. Uh, it happens quite a lot in the film photography world, actually. Uh, I've noted where where people who are film photographers they'll publish a zine and they'll include in the first however many of them or or whatever uh, a a hand print from the dark room yeah of one, of one of the images just a little six by four so, you know just just as a, a token but it's a, it's a really nice thing to have because then you've got then you've got a print that somebody you know the artist has actually crafted over that print yeah. in a dark room and it, and, it, and it, even taking that away just from film photography because you know film photography is not for everyone and um, i've been printing loads more uh this year uh deliberately choosing to uh and uh you know just just again six by fours on my little canon selfie printer you know um and playing around with those and they sort of hang around the house and and people like them and you know you can give them to people and stuff like that it's 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 just it's just an, a nice thing to be able to do um and even even if it's a a picture you know i mean a, a picture made on a phone right and and played around with on the phone to print it out which seems possibly slightly counterintuitive but it's a, it's a really nice thing to have yeah it's it's funny you say that because i'm i'm, I'm about to embark on a, a a test run of taking one of my unreal engine images um and that i created on the lunar surface that that folio and doing a traditional gravure print uh, on plate and what so taken from complete digital to back to you know 18th and 19th or before a 16th century um gravure techniques um which is where I, I started as a printmaker. So I, I'm always drawn to that. And the same way that I'm taking, you know, OBJ files and making small sculptures of it, of which I've put up a few um, over the past. So, so I now know what an OBJ file is. I think I only learned that this week <laughs> so, with, with, with my new phone because I've been that's, playing with the LiDAR scanner on the phone. That's <clears> a <throat> great segue into our picks of the week because I happen to know that that is your pick of the week, Adrian. Okay. You take it away. It is. Right. Okay. So here's the thing, right? So new phones have LiDAR on them, at least some of them do. And I've been I've had my phone about four or five days now. And apart from it being almost as big as 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 the the things from uh two thousand and one a space odyssey. Um or it's it, it is great. It is fantastic and and it, the the step up right for, from from a five year old phone which is what I had was just extraordinary and I one of the things I've been doing is I've been playing with the lidar scanner with a three D scanning app uh, and you know I, I which one sorry which, which one, one? Uh, the, uh, I don't even know I think it was just called three D scanner or something like that it, it's a free one I was just trying right so I'm going to try several of them and then I'll probably end up buying the one that works best for me um, it doesn't have a 2D render engine the one that I've tried so far so it's difficult to render out other than through taking a screenshot which is not the best way of doing it but one thing I am interested in right is that you can make these 3D photographs essentially um, or and, and you can send them 3D models to other people yeah, with who as long as they have a, a an application, it could be on a, a full size computer or a phone or whatever. As long as they have an application uh, that, that that can spin these three D models, uh, then you can do it. And I'm wondering what happens in the same way that Chris likes to talk about the the, the democrat. I can't even say it. Democratization of photography. Uh, yeah, what about yeah, we've now got almost the democratization of 3D object making when once all of these phones get into everybody's hands. Oh, and just, I think there's some really exciting stuff. Just wait until we there. have devices on our faces to actually experience them in 3D. <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 there's some something's going to explode in a real interesting way once that yeah. happens and once it's, yeah, it's, it's less so, bulky yeah. than an Oculus. Indeed. Yeah. Anyway, my yeah. pick of the week is, is it, in my case, it's an iPhone. Um, it could be any anybody who who is thinking they ha- are these new phones uh, worth an upgrade. And you know, I've had mine for a few years now, but all the people in I, in YouTube think they're trying to try to say that they're not for some reason or they're not a big upgrade. Just go and do it if you can make that happen with everything else that's going around in the world today, because um, uh, it's been a phenomenal jump for me. All right, Jeremiah, your pick is a website. Well, 
Yes, it is uh, in the interest of hands across the water. Kunst matrix. <laughs> Kunstmatrix. So. I, I insist on a proper German pronunciation. It's Kunstmatrix. Oh, well, <laughs> Kunstmatrix. <laughs> Pretty good. Uh, there you go. Um, this is really worth exploring. Um, I, I did a, a just a little mock-up uh, for myself of creating a, I mean, they, they basically give you the opportunity, much like a website, uh, photo website, where, you know, you choose your, your environment, uh, you choose the size of work and your walls, and you put the stuff up, and you can move around awesome. and get a, more of a sense of scale. Um, there is a way of bringing people in. I don't think there is a way of bringing people in together, but you know that may happen um but it's uh it's it's a step in the right direction it, it's creating um a virtual experience of uh an art gallery and um there's all manner of of architectural places but uh and is, 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 is this sort of uh, is this um what you might call as a, as a service is is this like like yes. like yeah, pretty, a, any any website I don't know like a Squarespace or something where, yes. where you can log yeah. in and just create it. And yes. I'm, I'm, so, what, what so it's available to everybody. I am, I am moving that around. This is not a video. This is me doing a live navigating You're navigating. navigating the space. Yeah, and, and go close to an image, and I think you can get you know you can really it's yeah, it's pretty so so this is something that is available to amateurs yeah, right it's anybody. not just it's not just an industry tool no and it's not not only that is it's it's not overly expensive cool see i would so much prefer to share my work online in that fashion than i would do. i mean i don't do instagram anyway but it, that that seems far more fun <laughs> well it's it's a way it requires some uh, work effort from the user. Um, yeah, a little that's bit. A good, that's a good thing. That's you, a good but thing. it's fun. It's a lot of fun. If you're a gamer, you can use the WASD keys um, yeah. to move around. Yeah. So it's almost like uh, like uh, one of these 3D games. So yeah, it's pretty cool. I really have, yeah. uh, really intrigued. Um, do you know if it has a virtual uh, an Oculus interface or something like that? You know, I don't know. Um, that would uh, be good. Because that but would be perfect. They, if, I mean, you just hop in. By the way, if gallery. they don't, if they don't, they will soon. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah somebody will do it. Won't they? Sense, we should yeah. we should do a TFOP show. Right? Yeah, we had yeah. a challenge week we last could, week, didn't we? we right? Could, what if yeah. we what if we present? You know, a, a, a TFOP right. show. Um, by the way, oh, sure, go ahead, Jeremy. No, no, I was just um, I, I I was just commenting on. I I truly hope that this is the beginning. Uh, of a, a, a of more of these uh, developments in terms of virtual presentations. Like, for example, wouldn't it be nice to have a show at the British Museum <laughs> or the V&A, right, that you put on, right? Sure. Just take Why all not? those old masters off the wall. This is what it should be. And use that environment, which is just photogrammetry uh, creation of oh, space. I can get you within about endless. 50 feet. Is yeah. that okay? Just outside the fence. Just outside the fence at the, <laughs> the main entrance of the uh, British Adrian, Museum. Adrian, I'm telling you, once we have these devices on our faces, you can have yeah. that in real life. You're there and yeah. the pictures will be covered up with your photos. So you just walk to the British Museum and have <laughs> your own photos selfish. on the wall as virtual <laughs> pieces of art. Yeah, there right. you go. Oh, we'll see. We'll see. Anyway, my pick of the week What's is something yeah. very down to earth. It is uh, practical lighting in terms of um, things like fairy lights. And, oh, uh, you've got some new fairy lights. Love stuff fairy like lights. that. Merry especially, Christmas. especially since um, all this stuff is turning LED, and you can plug it into any USB port. So, mm. it, and they're cheap. So there's no reason to have. I mean, in the festive season, of course. But then there's also no reason to not use them as practical lights. I used them in a model shoot with like the model being embedded in a whole big ball of yarn of uh, LED lights and. Um, there's so many things you can do with it. Just throw them back background, uh, use them to light something, or um, well, many many cliche and not so cliche uses of these things. And they are, yeah, as I said, not expensive, six bucks or something for a string of 100 LEDs. Um, they are just falling out 
by the thousands out of some Chinese factory. And um, they are pretty long lasting and pretty simple. Yeah. Yeah, they're good. Cool. All right. That's this week's episode of The Future of Photography. Um, as usual, find us online at TFOP now on Twitter, on Insta. Join our Discord, tftgf.com slash join TFOP. And of course, we are at thefuturephotography.com, which is our website. And with that, thanks everyone for watching, and we'll be back next week. Take care. Mm -hmm. Bye bye. Take care. Bye bye. Bye bye.